Black Girl Nerds. Better shake your booties for Black Girl Nerds. Hi, Sophia. Thank you so much for your time. You look very beautiful, and I'm so excited to talk to you about the series. Well, thank you. Thank you. It is my pleasure. This is a real fun series. You know, there's an allure that graphic novels have for people, which the series is based upon. What do you think is the allure of stories like this? Why do we enjoy going down these winding paths of of mystery and the unknown? What is the most appealing thing about a project like this? Hmm. I think, I think one thing that, this is a very interesting question. I like this question. Thank um, you. I would say that, I think we're all a little bit curious. About, well, I, you know, I'll only speak for myself. I think I'm, I'm curious about what the future holds for me. And I think a lot of people are too. And I think also just the the idea of time travel is so exciting and mysterious and and almost scary and I think it's just I think there's almost something around it that makes you think would I change if I was in a different time or if I were to meet my future self would I like myself now would I like myself in the future I just think that there are so many layers to it and I think that so many different people can be attracted to just one of those layers, 10,000 of those layers, just it's, it's an exciting concept. I like how you say that. I know in on our side of it, on the journalism side, we like to ask artists, you know, what would you, what would older self tell your younger self if you had a chance to meet and these characters have a chance to meet without too many spoil, without any spoilers, because we don't know when people are going to see this, who is Mac as a child and who, what do you think Mac is that the, what do you think the journey will be like for Mac that the viewers will have a chance to enjoy seeing these two different versions of her? Okay. So I would describe Mac as um, a guarded, foul-mouthed, brazen, sometimes pugilistic little street tough. And she comes from a rough home. She's a hard She's a hard nut to crack, but she has a heart of gold and she's a far more complex creature than she lets on. And I think that at the beginning of the series, we're mainly just seeing her exterior. And towards the, as the series progresses, um, I think you're able to see, you can see a little bit more of what she has happening on the inside. And she's able to actually sort of explore who she really is. Mm -hmm. What I always, I, I, it makes me laugh so much because I have a, a child who's old, probably older than you, but I, it tickles me to death to see young people cursing in series. I think it's really, really funny because it's all in the scope of art. It's not like you're just in the streets with a megaphone, <laughs> you know, just yelling at people. So when you read the script and you get to see all that it entails, how did you first react when you got to read through Max dialogue, assuming you hadn't read any of the, the graphic novels? So how did you react to first seeing your character's arc? Ah, uh, to first seeing the character's arc or first seeing kind of all the, all the language? Just both. Okay. Um, well, when I first got the audition, I was at my grandparents' house, and my grandpa is, to, to say the least, he's not a fan of bad language, and I'm not, I'm not either. I don't use bad language, um, but I went to one of the back bedrooms to tape the, uh, to tape the audition, and I was trying to keep, keep it as quiet as possible every time I would approach the F word or something like that. Sometimes I would just substitute it for flipping or something like that. Um, because I was afraid he would hear me from the other room. <laughs> but I think that it's also interesting because in the beginning of the series, Matt, Mac uses a ton of bad language, but as things move on and as she's um, a little bit letting her guard, as she's letting her guard down a little bit more, she's less reliant on the bad language. And I think that that's just an interesting little, little tiny part of her that I, it was just interesting to see. Absolutely. And lastly, there's a lot of effects and things that go into a show like this in, to, in addition to strong characters. So when you have a chance to see 
the finished version of any of the episodes back, is it, how do you see, feel seeing yourself with all the things that are going on in the background, a very different perspective than when you're actually filming it? Well, I'll start by saying the effects, the special effects are just, they're, they're wild and they're amazing. And I, I love any of seeing all of these special effects, especially when it's all come together in the end. Um, as far as watching myself, I've had the opportunity to see the episodes and I, I don't, I don't, I feel like I don't really look anything like myself. I'm definitely, I don't act like how I, I act in, in person. And so it's just kind of, kind of interesting to see. It's sort of like watching a different person. Awesome. Well, I truly enjoyed you in the series. It's really, really cool and fun. And I appreciate you taking some time to talk to me. Have a great premiere. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. You guys look great. I love the outfit Thank choices. You. Thank you. Thank you. Everything. I, well. I, I like all of the, I like, I like all the personality choices because it thinks it makes me think of all the personalities of your different characters and how unique and interesting they are to kind of come together like a Rubik's cube and, <laughs> and figure this out what they are trying to get. They're on a mission to get back home. Beginning with you, Riley for, for Aaron, we, that's one of the earliest characters we have the opportunity to meet. And it's interesting when you get to see a young version and an older version of the same person. When you play a character like that, do you have to connect yourself with the older version or the actor who's playing the older version of you to make sure your story is cohesive? And how do you, how do you go about that? How do you connect the two to make sure yeah. it's a clean arc? I think the cool part about Aaron's character is that the way she turns out is really unexpected because Aaron has like these standards set for herself and she wants to be a certain way. She wants to work in the White House one day and then it doesn't exactly turn out how she wants it to and it's really cool to see how she comes to term with this self-discovery and, and learning that it's okay to not have it all figured out. Absolutely. I'm still trying out and I'm probably like four times you guys' age. So, you know, there's that. Fina, Fina, for you, for KJ, what I like is she's not, it's not the norm, or maybe she is the norm in that she likes unique things, unique sports that you don't see girls typically enjoying. And they're just, she really adds like a, a level of strength to the group as they're trying to figure this out. Is that a fair assessment of her? How would you describe her? I'd say so. KJ is um, very emotionally intelligent while still being the sort of brawn of the group. Um, and uh, she is fiercely protective, but still subtle and simmering uh, and uh, is, has a very grounded moral compass. But your, uh, your overview of her is, is accurate, mm -hmm. I'd say. <laughs> Had you ever swung a hockey stick before this? Was that ever not, in the repertoire? I had not swung a hockey stick before this, but my mother was a field hockey player, and uh, our uh, a few of our directors were also field hockey players, and and our showrunner, and there was a lot of field hockey playing going on. So I had a lot of people teaching me how to how to swing. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Cameron, you are you already know black girl nerds. Mm -hmm. Your character is very near and dear to us because we love a, sh a a smart, young, intelligent black girl nerd who is in the <laughs> STEM and all of these things. Mm -hmm. Where okay, so where would you put your own math and science level in comparison to your character? Are we are we loving math across the board, or is it for TV only? I am a math girl. I, I, yeah, I think it's my favorite subject in school. Well, math and science are tied because I'm really like an anatomy person as well as like algebraic formulas because algebra, algebra is my stuff. It goes algebra <laughs> and then it goes geometry, but algebra is up here for me. But, <laughs> I did not say the same. <laughs> I, 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 same yeah. But yeah, Tiff's like math, science is like right here, and mine would be like right here ish. It's not down here. It's like up here, but it's not active. <laughs> if you know what I mean. If you know what I mean. 
Riley, if you could, all the characters are great, well-developed, well-layered, and we fall in love with everyone during the course of the show. But if you could trade with somebody for one day, for maybe one shoot, what character, if you could play a different character, what character is a fun character to you besides your own? Ooh, I think, I feel like Prioress would be a really cool character to play. Uh, Prioress, she's, am I allowed to, am I allowed to say badass? You can yeah, say it. Yeah, yeah, well, you won't tell. Yeah, Pyrus is awesome. Yeah, I would love to play Pyrus. I think she's super cool. <laughs> how about how about for you, Fina? I think it'd be fun to play Larry. <laughs> <laughs> you get to see so many sides of him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's got he's got the heartfelt moments. He's got the compassion. He's got the fear. He's got the anger. You know, yeah. and and he's just. You gotta love Nate. I don't think yes. I could. I don't think I could He's live so up to cool. Nate's portrayal of Larry, but yeah. I'd like to give it a shot. <laughs> and uh, lastly, for you, Cameron, because there's so many good choices in the show. All of the characters really cool and unique. Like Riley, I think it'd be cool to be Pryor's, but I feel like being adult Aaron could be really cool yeah. because Miss Ali was so so funny, and it was cool to like do all of to see her work. And I just think it'd be really cool to like play that if I could. Yeah. Okay. And lastly, raise your hand if you knew how to work the Walkman that Mac had during the course of the show that she was playing her music on. Who was who picked it up and was like, "Oh, I know what this is." Oh, Wait. I busted it open. I didn't. Well, I didn't what? break. No, I didn't break it. I like opened it, but I like didn't. Yeah. Like take anything out or anything. We but, yeah. we weren't allowed to handle the Walkman too much though because yeah. Yeah. it was a prop from the 80s and yeah. it was very fragile mm. and there was one that was a rubber mold yeah. <laughs> that Sophia wore most of the time on her hip uh, and then we had another one that was the real one when she needed to open it up yeah. but the plastic one broke a few times and it was falling apart so yeah. it was kind of kept locked away yeah. for only mm. when we needed it. It's awesome. I enjoyed you ladies so much. Thank you for your time. I loved seeing young people being confused by modern things like the internet and stuff that was some of the funniest moments like there's maps and everything on this thing <laughs> they showed me on the computer which is very funny and i really enjoyed it thank you ladies for your time have a great premiere and this is an awesome series thank you thank you so nice for having us you're Bye. welcome Bye. have Bye -bye. a great day Thank you guys for your time. It is greatly appreciated. I love this series because it's something about graphic novels that get to, to tap into those darker recesses and those questions that we don't like to say out loud sometimes about things we wonder. So beginning with you, Adina, the, the Prioress is an interesting character for those who aren't familiar with the stories in that she's a sort of a, a menacing presence in the mix in the midst of all these things that are happening with the young ladies trying to travel back home is it as simple as that as her being menacing because there's always layers within characters that kind of swing the pendulum between good and bad so to say absolutely and i hope so and i think that's why i get you know hired is because i i mean in the past i have played people who hate but you, you keep tuned in because you love how you, much you hate them. So um, I try very hard to, uh, to, 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 to always be human, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and if a person makes choices, it's because of um, her beliefs or her fears or um, what she thinks is right and wrong. So, um, and because we get to travel all, all through time, um, you get to see Prioris uh, uh, dealing with different times and how you have to react according to where you happen to be in time. So no, you can't just slate her as being um, evil or bad or untrustworthy. You have to uh, take the time to listen to where she's coming from and, and I think you many people can relate to why she makes the choices that she does. Absolutely. For, for you, Jason, you know, I was thinking about how to even say anything about your character because we don't meet you 
in the first episode or the second episode. Mm -hmm. And just even in all the tools that we look like, we don't know your character. Well, the public doesn't know your character name until they formally meet you in the series. So what is something you can say about your character? Because we don't know when people will watch this without context that they can draw, they can watch this again back later and be like, I remember when he said that, but it didn't make sense then. Sure. Um, well, I think, you know, one of the things that I really, I love about the character grandfather is, or what I like about, I'll say what I love about Paper Girls, uh, you know, as a as a project, as a story uh, inside of this story is you're following these, these like time traveling adventures of this group of, uh, of, young girls who are being thrust unbeknownst to them through different times, um, you know, meeting versions of themselves all the while being chased by this kind of military group, uh, the old watch uh, that Adina is, you know, pursuing them through time, you know, uh, and, and that there's this idea uh, that they are being chased by someone who is absolutely you know, catching up to them and you feel that tension as Adina is getting closer and closer. And I think there's something wonderful when you realize that there's somebody that Adina's character is nervous about, that that Adina has a boss that is not going to be happy. You know, there's a, I think there's a line before my character is introduced where one of the other soldiers says to Adina, what should, what should we tell grandfather? And Adina says, don't tell him any, or don't tell him anything, or, you know, <laughs> basically let's keep this from him. So that, that you kind of have this idea of like, oh, wait a minute, there's, Adina has a boss that she's nervous about. And I, lo I love that idea that there's an even bigger bad out there uh, lurking in the shadows that is going to be revealed. And I, that there's kind of something great about that. Uh, and then when he shows up and he's this kind of, casual Birkenstocks, you know, wearing, <laughs> you know, uh, old guy from, you know, thousands of years of the future, then you're kind of like, well, wh what is going on? <laughs> uh, and I, I like that the character is both a threat, a threat that doesn't necessarily look like a threat. Uh, there's something I think really compelling about that. So life lessons today, fear, Birkenstocks. We gonna write exactly. that. <laughs> yeah, I'll be honest. Don't trust. Don't trust a a, a man in over fifty in Birkenstocks. No way. Yes, 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 yes. And don't put your recyclables in the wrong container. Yeah, these are the exactly. lessons. <laughs> these these are the lessons today. Honestly, sage advice. Thank you guys for your time. Have a great series and premiere. It is a pleasure. Thank you for taking some time for us. Thank you so Thank much. You. Have a great day. Take care. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds.